Charlene Delmeyer. I'm with Kingsley Publishing Services and I'm in conversation with Megan Craven of Craven Editorial about the process of editing between author and editor. Hi Megan. Hi Charlene. What would you, how would you describe the best relationship between an author and an editor? What, what really works in your experience? And you've been editing for a long time. Yeah. What advice would you give writers? Well, I think that a lot of authors talk about their experience with their editor as like a mother-child relationship, but I don't think that's necessarily the best one. And the reason for that is you want to have an equal relationship with your editor, but at the same time recognize your editor's strengths and skills. Um, you want to be in arguments with your editor, especially regarding concepts and, and, um, and your vision of what your book is going to be, but you also need to respect that editor's experience mm -hmm. and their ability um, with style, grammatical style. Mm -hmm. How would you, what are the stages involved in editing and do you have to go through all those stages for every project? What if, if someone were looking at hiring an editor? Do they hire one editor, two editors? What, what's your advice? Well, I think that it's best to have at least two editors um, in the three-stage process of editing. Um, there are three stages. So the first would be structural or substantive editing. The second is copy editing. And the third stage, some people don't call it editorial work, but I do classify it as a type of editorial work, and that's proofreading. Um, I think it's important to at least have two different editors for these three stages, a substantive editor, and a copy editor. The proofreading could be done by the copy editor as well or by the structural editor. Mm -hmm. um, substantive editing is the whole picture. So at this point you are giving your manuscript to the editor direct from your computer. So the editor is going to be looking at it in terms of story, in terms of flow, in terms of what you may have left out or what may need to be taken out. And then it goes from there back to you and then there's the conversation that's usually that usually goes on between editor and author. Um, when that stage, when, when the manuscript has been worked out between those two key players, um, it then goes to a copy editor who is looking at grammar specifically, where the commas are going, where the semicolons are going, how the quotations are going to be set, if they're going to be offset, if they're going to be in quotation marks, how those end notes are going to look if yours is a work of nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it goes to the designer and then to proofreading. And the proofreader is the editor who looks at it at the final stage, making sure that everything looks as it should without making any major changes. How would you, uh, how does an editor make sure that the author or the creator of the work and she are on the same page so that you get a manuscript, you have a look at it, how do you respond to an author? How do you make sure that the editing you're going to be doing will, th that the author who will receive it knows what they're getting? Okay. Um, I think you're, you're talking about substantive stage yes, at this point. Yeah. So the substantive or structural editor at the beginning will do a preliminary read through the manuscript, noting deficiencies and, and good qualities about the manuscript as well. I think that a good editor not only gives you criticism, but also gives you props. You know, they, they tell you what's good about it because you want to build on what's good. So at that point, after the editor has done their preliminary read through, they will hopefully, a good editor will get in touch with you and say, this is where I think we need to go with this. And then you can have that conversation with your editor and say, okay, well, I, I agree with this, I don't agree with this. So there can be sort of a common ground before that substantive editor actually goes into the manuscript and starts suggesting changes. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty critical, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, to yeah. make sure. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that, that I've run into a number of times just when I'm working as an editor in the past and, and uh, doing project management is style guides and authors who really don't understand why yes. an editor is sticking to a style guide that they're, you know, are they just being didactic or stubborn yes. or, uh, uh, and I think it's, it's a topic that a lot of people could use some information on. Could you talk about that a bit? Sure, yeah. Most uh, trade editors or most trade publishers in North America use a specific style book. It's called the Chicago Manual of Style. The reason that uh, editors adhere to a certain style is so that during the editorial process there is that consistency and, and a logic to the way 
um, to the way that the manuscript flows. So there are reasons why a comma is used in a certain way and a semicolon in another way. And there are reasons why a paragraph at the beginning of a section isn't indented, whereas it is in other parts of the section. Um, I think that I think that a lot of authors don't realize that this is as, as important as it is in terms of consistency within a printed book and in terms of professionalism. Um, if you look at some books that are published without the guidance of a style guide or the guidance of an editor who has a style guide and creates a style guide for this, you will see um, problems that start at substantive editing and go right through to proofreading, especially if you have different editors all the way through who are using different style guides, different dictionaries, you're going to have different spellings for the same word, you're going to have different ways of using commas, and in the end, you will have a confused document that maybe some people wouldn't recognize that it's confused, but uh, the readership would recognize on a level that it was not a professionally put together document. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is one of the most common mistakes writers make or, or people make in working with an editor? Um, well, there are, there are a lot of them. <laughs> but what, uh, one that I have noticed a lot is uh, authors who do try to, to argue points that aren't really worth arguing. So uh, an author who will argue about the placement of a comma as opposed to a big concept in the book that, that that's, that's where the argument really needs to be, is the intellectual argument, not the grammatical argument. Because once you get to the copy editing stage, the people who are in charge of that are, are capable and they're skilled and the author should be able to trust the copy editor at that point, regardless of what style they may have used in university. Um, you know, this copy editor is using a style and they should just go with that. Uh, I think that where the big arguments and the big intellectual um, the conversation should occur is that substantive and they should occur there and, and the substantive editor will welcome that. At copy editing and proofreading, it shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So, really, it sounds to me what you're saying is that if you hire a professional, trust them to do their job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.